David had this problem when he was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back into Jerusalem. And one of his guys reached up to stop the Ark from falling off of the cart and fell over dead and David got scared. And he stopped the procession and he said, take it to the nearest house and leave it. God's too big for me to touch. So they turned and took it to the house of Obed-Edom. Obed of Edom. Obed of Esau, a Gentile. And they dropped it in his living room because if people are going to die for touching the ark, at least let it be a Gentile. That's the, that's the reasoning. So here you go. Good luck. See you in three months. And they left. And the Bible says that for the next 90 days, favor fell on the house of Obadiah. And David heard about it back in his palace and he went, hmm. I need some of that. Let's go get that ark and bring it home. Walked into the house of Obadiah and carried the ark back to Jerusalem. But he didn't take it to Gibeah where the tabernacle was set up. Instead, he brought it to his backyard and he set it on the ground and put a tent around it and opened the flat door and made an announcement in Israel. Anybody that wants to see God's presence, come to my house. I'll give you a loaf of bread and a flagon of wine. And the Bible says they threw a party and all of Israel walked in front of the Ark of the Covenant and peeked in because David had learned that you don't get to tell God who gets favor. Just put Him in front of people and let God do the picking. You want to know how convinced the early church was of this? They weren't sure Gentiles were really saved. So they threw a big meeting in Acts chapter 15. They threw the first Christian council in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 15. And at the first Christian council, they said, are Gentiles really saved? And Peter stood up and goes, I don't know about all of them, but I just preached to a bunch of Italians in Cornelius' house. This happened in Acts 10, five chapters earlier. And Peter goes, I just preached to a bunch of Italians in Cornelius' house. And here's all I know, that the Holy Ghost fell in that room and they received him the same way you and I did. So it taught me that maybe, listen to this, it taught me that maybe we get saved like they do. You didn't catch that. Here's what you think he said. It taught me that they're going to get saved like we do. No. Here's what Peter said. It taught me that we get saved like they do. This is, this is big. This is a first century Jewish man who's had an encounter with the resurrected Jesus who's baptized in the Holy Ghost and watched the Holy Spirit fall on a bunch of Italians and went, mm, wait a minute, none of them are circumcised, none of them know the Torah. I think I'm supposed to get saved the way they did. Not they're supposed to get saved the way I do. I think God might be doing something here. And after Peter talks, James and J Paul and uh, Barnabas stand up and talk. And they start telling stories about winning Gentiles to Jesus. And James, the brother of Jesus, stands up and says, I think we might be dealing with a tabernacle of David's situation. And have you ever read that and thought, what's the tabernacle of David? You know what the tabernacle of David was? When he put the Ark of the Covenant in his backyard, threw a tent around it, yep. held the door open, told everybody they can have a loaf of wine, flag and a, a flag and a wine, a loaf of bread, they come look at God. And James heard about Gentiles getting saved and went, I think the tabernacle of David is back. I think anybody that wants in can get in. Yeah. And the crowd turned on Jesus. And said, kill him. Let us not be amazed. Let us not be. Let us be amazed at the jubilee of the Spirit. Let us not be amazed that the jubilee of the Spirit will always include people that we are pretty sure do not qualify. That's right. That is so true. That's right. right? You don't get to make the rules. You want to know what it meant when Jesus told the Elijah and the Elisha story? Here's what it meant. You don't get to make the rules. If my dad wants to heal one leper in the world and he picks a bloodthirsty Syrian, you don't get to tell God who he gets to save. 
if my dad chooses to bless one widow and her kid and he picks a Gentile woman who doesn't even trust God, you don't get to choose. That's right. And the crowd went, you can't be our Messiah because our Messiah don't tell us what to do. Listen, we are not followers of fads and flags and politics yes. and countries and ideas That's right. and ministers. Yes. We are followers of Jesus. Amen. And Jesus says, you don't get to pick who belongs. That's right. Amen. You don't get to pick. Amen. 